So before we start the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video as it helps the channel grow. So let's get into it. All right, so week 17 of the NFL season is coming up. And for the Chicago Bears, they will be taking on the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday, looking to get another win um, to add to their total on the season. In this video, as always, I'm going to give my three keys to the game on what I think the Bears should do to be able to win this game. So without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, guys? KT here, back at it with another video. Today, we're doing the Bears. The Bears will be taking on the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday in a game that is very much winnable and a game that they should win. Um, but, you know, the Falcons won their last game. They've been competitive in some other games and other games they have not. Um, it should be a very entertaining game. I'm not going to hold you off for too much longer. Let's get straight into the first key of the game. My first key of the game when you go against the Atlanta Falcons this Sunday is the Bears have to continue their success with running the ball. Um, the Bears... Um, prior to last week, haven't had much success um, running the ball as of recently. Part of that is due to injuries. Part of that is due to lack of execution. But last week against the Cardinals, um, you know, they were able to get the run game going. Khalil Herbert rushed for over 100 yards. Um, the team had over 200 yards rushing. And uh, that, that running game was really working for the Bears on Sunday against the Cardinals. Um, I was pleased with the... I do think now with Deontay Foreman now getting back into the lineup, I feel like you should give him a little bit more burn. Um, but Khalil Herbert seems to have that explosiveness back. He's able to, he was able to find the holes against the Cardinals. So I just want the Bears to keep building off that. You know, Justin Fields using his legs to get outside the pocket, scramble, um, run, scramble, drill. You know, it's when your run game is working, it's very hard for the defense to just key in on one thing. And I think that's what the Bears were missing um, prior to that Cardinals game. Um, and besides, the Falcons aren't necessarily all that bad of a defense. Um, their secondary is actually much better than their run defense, in my opinion. Um, they have a pretty good secondary with Terrell and Jesse Bates leading that secondary. Um, and they have a pretty good pass rush as well, Calais Campbell. And um, I think Grady Jarrett is still there. So they have a pretty good a pretty good pass rush. I wouldn't say it's great, but they have a pretty good pass rush. Their defense hasn't necessarily been the problem. Um, it's mainly been their offense. So mainly, I think I would like to see the Bears commit to the run game. Give Deontay Foreman at least 15. You know, give Khalil Herbert at least 17. You know, something like that. You know, split the running back carries equally. Roshan Johnson should be able to get involved. Um, because when you run that ball, you run that rock, you soften up that defense, you make them vulnerable to play action, and you give yourself short yardage situations. So I'd like to see the Bears rush for over, um, I, I want to go for 170. I would like to see the Bears rush for over 170 yards. I feel like that's doable. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see the Bears run the ball on Sunday. Point number two. Um... Take advantage of short yardage and red zone possessions. The main thing that's marred this Bears team going into week 17, um, and especially these last two games of the season, it showed up in multiple games as the red zone and short yardage play calling decisions. Last week, we had a wildcat play um, with Khalil, I'm sorry, with Roshan Johnson um, on a third and one that could have easily iced the game. Um, if they just ran, lined up on the center, got a fullback back there and ran the ball up the middle. We did not do that in that Cardinals game. Luke Getze decided to get cute on third and one um, and went wildcat for no apparent reason. Um, and that nearly cost us the game because he did not convert that third down. We had the punt. And, you know, it's just stuff like that that makes the game so much harder for this team. And it's bad decisions like that that cost team that cost this team some games earlier in the season. Um, in the red zone, there are certain plays that you shouldn't be running in the red zone. Right now, while the Justin Fields interception was completely on him for not throwing the ball a little bit harder and undercooking that ball. You know, me personally, I probably would have ran the ball on first down going into the red zone. Justin Fields had just ripped off a big run. I would like to see the Bears line up under center, get some short yards, get closer so you wouldn't have to throw on first down outside the gun. Um, but this team is going to have to convert on their red zone opportunities and short yardage as it's going to make the game easier. Um, and this Falcons team, you don't have to do much to beat this Falcons team. 
in, if you just are able to convert on short yardage situations, when you get in the red zone, you know, after a crucial turnover or they give you good field position, you're going to have to be able to capitalize at least if not with a field, if not with a touchdown, at least a field goal. Um, but the play calling has to get 10 times better in those situations. It's critical stuff like this um, that has cost the Bears games and that might co cost this coaching staff its job. Um, but you know, going into this Falcons game, the Falcons are one of the best red zone defensive teams in the league. Um, and while their defense isn't good all over the field, they really buckle down in the red zone. Um, so I'd like to see the Bears capitalize when they get into the red zone, be creative, draw up some plays, be able to get positive yardage in the red zone and be able to score some points. And when you get into short yardage situations, just do the simple thing. Don't try to be cute. Pick up the yardage that you need to keep the chains moving. That makes it infinitely harder for that defense to set up and continue these long drives that tires them out. And it makes it easier for your offense to move the ball. So, you know, be smart on red zone possessions and short yardage possessions. Point number three, let the Falcons beat themselves. Now, the Falcons are a team that's very interesting. They have a decent defense. They have pieces on the defense. They have pieces in the linebacking core. They have pieces on the defensive line. They have a decent defense. They have a decent offense. You know, they have two very good running backs in Tyler Algier and the rookie B. John Robinson that they don't even use. They have a very good receiving core with London, Van, Jeff Van Jefferson, um, Matt Collins, um, Kyle Pitts. Um, they have a very good offensive line as well. Um, they run a system that is, you know, can create space for their receivers. The main thing that the Falcons are missing right now is the quarterback and the coach. Arthur Smith has been absolutely terrible as a head coach. His play calling decisions, his personnel usage um, has been terrible for this team. Why have Drake London if you're not going to use him? Why have Kyle Pitts if you're not going to use him? Why draft Bijan Robinson that high if you're not going to use him? You know, Bijan should obviously obviously be averaging at least 25 carries a game if you take a running back that high and when he does get burned on the offensive side he's an absolute killer that's one thing the bears are gonna have to be look out for as you know their running game can be deadly if they commit to it with the right guys but arthur smith he has not been a good head coach down there in atlanta i think the atlanta fans will be able to tell you that right off the bat but main thing the main thing that the falcons are missing is a quarterback Desmond Ritter has not panned out. He has gotten benched once again. Um, his bad decision making, his turnovers, his lack of big plays, you know, that's cost the Falcons games. It cost them that Panthers game, which I'm still mad about. Um, so now Taylor Heineke is in the game. But let's just be honest. Taylor Heineke is not all that much better. He's a good spot starter. I think he's talented, but he can't be your franchise quarterback. He's hot and cold. This Falcons team is hot and cold. One day they'll score 30. The next they'll score six. So, you know, it doesn't take that much to beat this Falcons team, especially with the way the Bears defense has been playing. Um, they've been able to get sacks on the quarterback, get pressure, rush the quarterback out the pocket, make him make bad decisions. Um, that secondary has been locking up everybody and they've been able to stop the run. And the Falcons are prone to turning the ball over and making very dumb decisions, especially personnel decisions and, you know, bad QB throws. So it's not... It's not too hard to beat the Atlanta Falcons because most likely the Atlanta Falcons are going to beat themselves. Like I said, it's not an easy game by any means necessary, um, by any means, as this still is an NFL team. But just the, con you know, just the ineptitude on some of the coaching decisions and quarterback play. You keep shifting quarterbacks every few games. You, that means you don't have one. And if your coach is not using the right personnel, it just makes that quarterback's job infinitely harder. Um, so, yeah, my third key was would be, you know, let the Falcons beat themselves, you know, get pressure on Taylor Heineke, make him make some done decisions with the ball, force Arthur Smith to make some make some tough decisions on that offensive end of the ball, um, especially in short yardage situations, make him get too cute or make him, you know, make some very bad decisions with his play calling. If the Bears do that, they have an easy chance of winning this game. But I got the Bears winning. 27-17. Um, the Falcons can be hot and cold. Um, I feel like Taylor Heineke will have some initial success against this Bears defense as we don't necessarily play, you know, the Falcons that often. I feel like they'll work off their running game early, but eventually I do think the Bears defense will stiffen up as usual and, you know, kind of shut down that Falcons offense. Um, they're pretty much 
they're pretty much a jack of all trades, master of none. They have all the talent in the world, but are missing the two most important pieces. As for the Bears offense, I feel like they'll also work off their running game now with Deonta Foreman back. I don't know if Cole Komet will be playing. I don't know if Tevin Jenkins will be playing, um, but I feel like DJ Moore has had another week to rest an ankle, so he'll be 100%. I feel like Justin Fields will continue being the dual threat quarterback that he is, um, rushing outside the pocket, making plays outside the pocket. I feel like the Bears should have an an easier time winning this game. I feel like they'll struggle early, but as the game progresses, I feel like the defense will bunker down and the Bears will be able to capitalize off of some of the turnovers. I think the Bears get two turnovers in this game. I feel like they'll be able to capitalize. I feel like they will put the car the put the Falcons away in the fourth quarter with another field goal and the Bears will walk out of there with their seventh win of the season. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you have the Falcons or do you have the Bears winning? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video as it helps the channel grow. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I drop one of these Bears videos. As always, follow me on social media as there's always Bears news um, going on. Thank you guys for watching. Bear down and I'm out. Peace.